Welcome back to another edition of The Wizard Shop. Today we're going to talk about false alarms, things that happen to persons who are not so mechanically inclined and it scares them really bad and they take it to the shop to find out it was totally not a big deal. Right after this. So today I've got 10 different incidents that have actually happened in the shop. Mrs. Wizard's going to help me out with this today. She's going to actually kind of role play a little bit and show me some of the things that people have gone through and have actually been towed to the shop only to find out, like I said, it really didn't even need to come to the shop in the first place. We're going to start off with really simple ones and they get more complex as we go. For you guys out there that are serious car gurus, you're probably going to say this video is stupid. This video isn't geared towards you. It's more along the lines of people that are not really that mechanically inclined that have experienced issues with their car and they're not sure what just happened. Maybe this might help out to alleviate some unnecessary towing bills. Or you can pass this along to someone who's having trouble with their car and say, hey, check out this video. Maybe it's one of these 10 things and maybe it'll save you a tow bill or something along those lines. So without further ado, let's get started. What's going on? Well, Car Wizard, it, it, it's not starting. What's going on? It, it turns over. It cranks and cranks, but just won't start. Yeah, it's crazy. This is one of those scenarios where you need to look at your fuel gauge. Believe it or not, I've had multiple vehicles every year towed to my shop, a $100 tow bill. I would get into the car, I turn the key on, and the fuel gauge doesn't even move. I put five gallons of gas in for the customer, the car starts right up, and they're actually angry. And not really angry at me, but I call them and say, hey, it was just out of gas. We've got some gas in it, and it starts up. It runs great. And they're like, I just paid a $100 tow bill for that. I'm like, yes, you did. In fact, you really did pay a $100 tow bill for that. Sorry, should have checked your fuel gauge. That's one thing to check when it's cranking and cranking and it won't start. Check your fuel gauge. It might just be the solution to the problem. On to the next one. Why can't I put these windows down? This one goes down, but the rest of them aren't going down. What the heck is going on with this car? Car wizard. So your driver's window works, yeah. but none of the others do. Mm -mm. Well, we need to take it to the shop and have the mechanic take a look at that. So the customer brings it to the shop, goes through all the scheduling rigmarole to get it there. First thing that I notice, I go to look at the switches. I always check this because this has happened not just one or two times, or probably 20 times and since I've been open. There's the, the little button, that a window lockout feature. You push the button and it locks out all the other windows. You see the little button that has an X on the windows? They, you, if you turn that on, it shuts off power to the other windows and they won't work. You'd be surprised, guys, how many times that I've Press the button again and all the windows start working just fine. Usually I don't charge the customer. I say, hey, I push the button. You can come pick up your car. But if you were to take this to a dealership, they're not going to be lenient or understanding with you. They're going to stick you with a half an hour diagnosis and you're going to pay it because you didn't push the button. Make sure you check those things before you take it to a dealership or a mechanic who may not be understanding. Now, like I said, I always would return the car to the customer and say, hey, no charge, just make sure you bring your cars to us. But uh, that has happened more times than I'd like to admit, a lot. On to the next one. What the heck? Why is my left blinker going crazy? Car wizard, what's going on? So if most of you already know, that's a light bulb that's out. We know that, obviously. But not everyone does. It's really easy to think that everyone in the whole world knows as much as you or I do about cars. They don't. I have many customers who are doctors, lawyers, executives of companies. Their specialty is in what they do with their business. It's not in knowing how the car works. They don't care how the car works, and I don't blame them. So before you go through all the rigmarole of taking it to the shop and going through all that just to find out it was a light bulb, Maybe you've got a friend or a family member, a brother or a sister or something along that lines that might have a little bit of mechanical knowledge. They might be able to go to your friendly parts store, pick up a $2 bulb and put it in and you're back on the road. You don't have to schedule. You don't have to call the shop at all. You don't have to worry about the time. If I have to take your bulb apart and pull the whole bulb assembly or the taillight assembly out, I'm probably going to charge you for that. 
might be $30 or $40, depending on how difficult it could be to get to. Some cars are very difficult. On to the next. What's going on with this air conditioner? Every time I come to a stop sign or when I come to a red stoplight and the auto stop turns the engine off, this air conditioner gets really, really warm, but it's cold the rest of the time. Car wizard, what's wrong? Okay, this is a common issue that I've been through a few times. There's two reasons why this can happen. Number one is it's normal if you have auto stop start feature on your car. If the engine stops, it's not compressing the refrigerant anymore. You're not going to get cold air. It's just the way it is. That's the way the system's designed. And I've had to discuss this with people on the phone and say it's just the way it is. If you don't like that, that it does that, there's usually a button you can press on your dash that shuts off the auto stop start feature on most modern cars. The other scenario is it's just a tiny bit low on refrigerant. And it may, it may be your vehicle doesn't have stop start feature. It's just that when you come to a red light, it starts to get warm. The AC, the air coming out of the vent starts to warm up. The AC is not doing like it should. And it could be that you have a friend or family member, they might be able to buy us at Walmart or wherever. You can get a small can of Freon and just add enough till it starts cooling again. And that can get you by. That might get you by for a while. It may work all summer long. But if you have to take that to a shop and it is a little bit low on Freon, I'm not just going to add a half a can of Freon. I'm going to hook my AC machine to your vehicle. I'm going to charge you an hour of labor to use that machine because that machine cost me $5,000. I'm not going to hook up that machine for 10 bucks. And then I'm going to weigh all, I'm going to pull all the refrigerant out of your car and weigh it and see what it should be versus what it actually is. Then I'll add enough to bring it to the exact level. Today's cars need to be accurate within an ounce or two. You can't just dump a can and say, well, it's still not cold. I'll dump another can in it. That's not the way that you do these. A modern car is very sensitive to how much refrigerant is in the car, down to an ounce or two, like I said. So there's some things to think about if these issues happen to you. On to the next. Hey, Car Wizard, every time I drive my car over like 40, 50 miles an hour on the highway, it gets a shimmy, like the wheel's out of balance or something, but I thought we'd just balance these. All right, well, let me show you. Let's squat down here, and I will show you exactly what's going on here. So the common issue here has happened many times, and it usually happens to people who live on a dirt road, maybe people who live out in the country. We personally live on one mile of dirt road, just one single mile. It's enough to cause this issue. As you can see, all this dirt and mud that's in the wheel well here. It also gets in the wheel itself. As you can see, there's a little bit of dirt or dust on there right now. It's not enough to cause an issue, but there's been many times where Mrs. Wizard has had the vibration in her steering wheel, something's not right. I put it on the lift and just get a, a wooden ruler or something and scrape the dirt out, or you can wash it out with a garden hose problem solved. It doesn't need to go in and have a balance done at a tire shop. It could very well be that you traveled to a friend's house or a family member over the holidays. They live on a dirt road. You got mud in your wheel. That's all it could be. You could wash it out with a garden hose and it cost you literally nothing and you can totally solve the issue. Now if you look in there and there's no dirt or you haven't driven on dirty or muddy roads, it may be that a weight come off or you may need to get it into a shop and get a balance job done. So those are things to think about when you start all of a sudden just experience out of balance wheels. So Car Wizard, now my brakes are doing something really weird. Every time I press them, it sounds scary, like something's really scraping and breaking. It's really bad. You've got to fix it. So this has happened many, many times that someone brings it in. You don't have to live on a dirt road. It could be just a gravel in the road. A piece of small little pea-sized piece of gravel gets lodged in between the brake pad and the rotor, and it just gets stuck there. You can almost see that it's happened at some point on this rotor. You can see a ring right above my finger that goes all the way around the whole rotor. That's where a small rock has gouged into the rotor. It's very easy for this to happen for a pebble or something to get stuck in the, in the pad. You hit the brakes and it sounds like metal to metal, like and you think, oh my God, my brakes are about to fail. And the truth is, is they're probably not. It could very likely be that your brake pads have failed, but it's something to check. You might be able to look through the wheel and see, oh, I can see a ring around the rotor. It's just a pebble or something. Just keep that in mind if you take it to a shop because 
If you get to a shop that's not very honest, they're not very truthful, they'll say, oh yeah, you need all new brakes, all new rotors, it's going to be $400. When the truth is, they could take a small pick and pick the pebble out of the way, and you're fine. The noise goes away. Power Wizard, what if you're driving and you can't do that? You can't get it to your local shop. Is it okay to just let it go? Yeah, it's not going to hurt anything. Eventually, the pebble could just work its way out. But it, it might put a small ring around the rotor. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to damage anything. If you're somewhat mechanically inclined, you could pull the wheel off and get the pebble out yourself. It's really not hard to do. But just keep that in mind that it's another thing that could happen, that it's not a big deal. That a shop could make it sound like a big deal. On to the next. Not again. Why, why are, it's just making clicking sound. Car Wizard, now what's going on? I checked the gas gauge, it's got gas. I, it's dry, it was driving fine, what's going on? So that's actually what this vehicle is in here for. And they go to crank it the last several hundred days. Who knows, it started just fine. And all of a sudden they go out to start it and click, 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 click. And it's easy to think, well, the starter went out. And it, it kind of does sound that way. But this issue that has arrived here, when we checked it out, the battery was drained completely flat. And so I recharged it, and we've let it set for overnight. It's dead again. And I don't think that there's a drain. I think the battery has internally shorted because the sides of it are swollen really bad. We're going to put a new battery in it, and very likely it'll solve the issue here. This guy, this customer is a very good customer of mine. He trusts me. I trust him. And he says, go ahead and put a starter on it, but it really, it doesn't need a starter, and we can put a battery on it, and he'll be back in business. But be careful if you go to a shop that you don't know them, or you're not sure, and just say, go ahead and replace the starter. You better believe they will replace your starter, even if it doesn't need it. They may find out there was a bad battery connection. They're still going to replace your starter. They're not going to get that money from you. So make sure you check those things. Check the battery connections. Maybe it just needs a battery and you can put it in yourself. Uh, those are things to keep in mind when it goes click, click, click. It may not need a starter. It may be something simple. Okay, Car Wizard, <clears throat> we're not going anywhere. What's going on? So just as we talked about a minute ago, it ended up thinking it was a starter was the issue and it ended up being the battery. Something was draining it. And I found out that the battery itself is bad. But it can be an instance where simple 12 volt accessories are plugged in, you're not thinking about it, and it can completely drain your battery. Things that are plugged into your power outlet or your cigarette lighter, as some people call it, maybe for the past several months there's not been an issue, but all of a sudden something electrically has gone wrong in that accessory, and now it stays on all the time, and it drains your battery dead every morning. Let's take a look here. Here we have a cell phone charger which there's nothing plugged to it right now. But let's say this accessory was plugged in that goes to this GPS. Maybe a setting was changed, maybe something's gone faulty in that GPS unit, and all of a sudden it never shuts off. You don't realize it. You come out in the morning and your battery's dead, and you're like, well, why did it do that? It could be very simple as unplugging that item, recharging your battery, and you're back on the road without spending a bunch of money. If it is that you're plugging that in and it's constantly causing a dead battery, you need to research and find out what's going on with that accessory. Maybe contact the manufacturer and say, hey, this thing's killing my battery, or, or search on the internet and see if there may be a common issue with that unit. But you'd be surprised how many times I have found accessories plugged in and that was the cause of the battery drain. It could be an aftermarket stereo that you put in, and we've had one before, a really cheap one off of eBay on an old truck. It didn't really matter if it was a nice radio or not. We put it in, and for some reason it stuck itself on Bluetooth mode, and it refused to turn off, ever. We came out to dead batteries, dead batteries, and finally I got rid of the radio, and that was the problem. Keep that in mind when the battery's dead. What is the last thing I added to this? Did I add a GPS? Did I add an aftermarket radio? Did I add a phone charger or something? Maybe that's the issue. And if you have kids, they may have something plugged into one of the rear outlets that's been charging a battery all night long and it just totally drained your battery. Check those things before you go through all the trouble of going to the shop. It may just save you a trip. On to the next. Okay, now what's going on? Service required. Car was 
sir. This has happened many, many, many times, and it's totally understandable. I never get mad at the customer or anything of that nature. You have a warning come on, it says service required. And Toyotas are really good about this. They have a little red light that comes on, it says maintenance required. And I get a phone call, it says, Car Wizard, m m my check engine light's on, something's wrong. Oh my God, is my engine gonna blow up? Is something really bad wrong? I don't know, bring it in and we'll check it out. I bring it into the shop and I look at the gauges and it's just a little maintenance required light. Anytime you see service required or maintenance required, this is not referring to that something's wrong with your car. All it means is it's time for an oil change. That's it. You didn't have to rush to the shop for that. If you look in your owner's manual, you'll see what the different lights mean, different warnings and different things. It could be that you just call the shop and in the next few weeks schedule in an oil change or a service. It might, on a Mercedes, it could be service A, service B, service C, or on a Honda, it could be service one, two, three, or different things of that nature. If you see service required or maintenance required, it doesn't mean the end of the world. It just means it's time for a service. Not a repair, but a service. But Car Wizard, I just had an oil change. Why does it say I need another one? That's a very common issue as well. You take it to a quick loop place. They change your oil and do the full service, but they don't reset the maintenance minder on the dash. So as far as the maintenance minder and the car is concerned, you haven't had an oil change yet, even though you did. And it comes on with the light. So it's just time for an oil change. It doesn't go by a sensor or anything. It can't sense that your oil needs to be changed. It's going by miles. So many miles have passed, so many hours the engine has ran. It's time for an oil change. I don't care if you just did one yesterday. It's time for another one. When the fact is it's not time for an oil change. It just needs to be reset. That's all it is. Car Wizard, do you have to take it to a shop to get the light reset? No, you don't have to always. You can go to YouTube or Google or your favorite web browser and you can type in service reset procedure for your particular model of car. And very likely you can do it yourself right there in your garage and reset it. If you know the oil change was just done a day or two before, it's a good time to just go ahead and reset it yourself. But if you're not comfortable doing it, take it back to the place that did your oil change and say, hey, you didn't reset my service reminder. And they could take care of that for you. And if they can't reset your service reminder, they probably don't need to be doing your oil changes. It's time, probably time to find a new shop. Every car that I've had in, I can reset every single service reminder. So make sure that they can also do it as well. On to the next. Okay, now the check engine light is going flash, 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 flash. What do I do now, Car Wizard? So this is an issue where it's something small could turn into be something really big. It's kind of a vice versa scenario here. This is actually what happened to this van. The customer was very wise. They noticed that it felt like something was shaking in the engine and the, whenever they would drive, the check engine light would flash, blink intermittently. When your check engine light flashes, what that is telling you is there is an issue going on with the engine that is putting you in real danger of destroying your catalytic converters. That's why it's flashing. There's unburned fuel getting past that could overheat your catalytic converters and damage them. They're saying don't drive anymore unless you want to buy new cats, which are probably two grand. If you want to do that, go ahead, but most people don't. This customer, like I said, was very wise. It was flashing and he said, you know what? I'm just gonna tow it to your shop because I don't wanna damage it. And we got it in here. We found out it was cylinder one misfire and all that was wrong is that it's time for new plugs. One of the plugs had gotten so bad that it damaged the coil and took the coil with it. It doesn't need all new coils. It just needs the one coil replaced and all new plugs. It's time for new plugs. We got that taken care of. The check engine light went away, the flashing went away. It's totally solved. We were able to replace all the plugs and the one coil, 250, 300 bucks. It wasn't a big bill, so luckily the guy doesn't have to worry about that. So that finishes up the 10 items that could be something that's very small, get taken care of without writing a huge check or trying to schedule into a shop a very inconvenient repair visit. Keep in mind, all of these 10 things that we've mentioned, next time you have an issue come up, it may just save you a bunch of money. In the next few videos, we're going to have some more of this guy. We've got some parts ordered. We're going to show repairing some of it. This is going to be a really nice car when I get done with it. And it's going to be one that Mrs. Wizard says I probably won't keep, but we'll have to see because 
these, you don't just come across, these are in really good condition. A lot of people have mentioned in the comments they want to name this car Blastoise or War Turtle. I'm going to let you guys choose between those two. I think either one of those would be really cool because it is a Pokemon Turtle. I guess it's an evolution from Squirtle to War Turtle and then Blastoise. So I guess either one of those would be really cool. You guys vote in the comment section what this little guy should be named. Also, you can check the link below to my Amazon Affiliates page. It has all the tools listed that I use. You can purchase them there. Also, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. we got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.